All right, let's hit our last game and then get out of here for the day. And then we're going to hit our mailbag questions and then we'll get out of here. So the Nets in the map. So the Nets lose another heartbreaker. If you guys remember, they were up six late against the Cavs and they blew that one. This one, they were up five late and they blew this one. Cam Thomas and Royce O'Neal go crazy in the fourth quarter. But then Luka hits back to back to back to back threes to steal the game. The last one's literally a prayer where they get him to give up the ball twice. But he just throws up this like right-handed push shot from 27 feet on the right wing that banks in. And then Cam Thomas, once again, gets a decent look at the end of the game but can't make it. And the Mavericks are now 2-0. and um, Down big late, though, offense wasn't the issue. The Mavs scored 37 points in the fourth quarter. As good as Luka was down the stretch, Kyrie was every bit as good to start the fourth quarter. The Mavs scored 20 points in the first six minutes of the fourth quarter with Kyrie basically creating every basket. He's got great pick-and-roll chemistry with Dwight Powell. Already hit him for a couple uh, of layups. Powell also hit a three in the corner off of a driving kick from um, from Kyrie to cap that run off. But again, like it, that's the crazy thing with this team. is like you Your reward for surviving the Luka minutes is here comes Kyrie and he's going to be almost every bit as impactful and then if you survive those minutes, here comes Luca again, right? And like so far through two games, they've been impossible to guard in every configuration. 121 offensive rating so far for the season. 121 offensive rating with Kyrie on the floor and Luca off. 125 offensive rating with Luca on and Kyrie off. And with both on the floor, a 118 offensive rating. So there's no point in the game where they're going to experience offensive lulls. Now the question is, are they going to be able to get enough stops, right? And on the defensive end, it was mostly just sloppiness. Like they straight up lost Royce O'Neal way too many times in that fourth quarter. The first one was strong side help from uh, from Grant Williams. Like literally, uh, I think it was, um, I can't remember who it was that was driving downhill. I think it was Spencer Dinwiddie. But like they just left Royce O'Neal on the strong side corner, which you don't want to do, right? You want to force the defense to make a skip pass across the court if they're going to give up an open three, right? Um, that gets him going. The second one in transition, they just don't guard him. Like Tim Hardaway Jr. I believe was supposed to be guarding him, but he's like facing completely away from him elsewhere on the floor. And Royce O'Neal is just standing by himself on the right wing. They throw, they pitch it ahead to him. He knocks down the three. And then on the last one, Josh Green, again, now again, like you got to think of it like this. Nail help is an important part of NBA defense, but it's all relative to what your situation is, right? Royce O'Neal had just made two threes. And Josh Green was like sinking way down to the nail in help. And so when they threw that swing pass to Royce O'Neal, Josh Green had to close out hard. And so Royce just threw a pump fake at him and ended, and ended up sidestepping into another three, right? Like Cam Thomas made some tough shots. And your defense is going to have to withstand tough shots, right? Like I talked about earlier in the show, all these teams have offensive ratings over 100. Like, no one's just not scoring the basketball. It's not like you can literally shut a team down. Guys are going to score. But you have to find ways to close down other opportunities. You can't give them the easy ones that come over the course of the game. If Cam Thomas makes the tough shots, but you don't leave Royce O'Neal open, then you don't need Luke, Luca to make a prayer at the end of the game to win the game, right? So, like, those are, those are the areas that they've got to improve. Now, a positive sign... They've rebounded pretty well. Remember, that was a huge problem for the team down the stretch last year. They've grabbed 49% of available rebounds through two games. That's pretty good. And again, they're 2-0. I know the Nets and Spurs aren't playoff teams in the in the purest concept of that, right? But wins are not easy to come by in the NBA. And so, like, in my opinion, you can't hope to be in a better position than where they're at right now. And again, like, I do think that defensively they have the personnel to be better than they actually are. And a lot of it is just little tiny execution things that they can improve over time. And the offensive shot creation piece is legitimately a weapon. Like, I mean, we've talked a lot about the Suns potentially being the best offense in the league, and they very well may may end up uh, uh, being so. But like, Dallas is every much every bit as much potential to be the best offense in the league. That's just when you've got that type of top tier shot creation relentlessly coming at you all game with good spacing concepts and with players at the end. Uh, at the end of those plays that can finish those plays, you're going to score a lot of points. On the Nets front, uh, Cam Thomas follows up his 36-point night against the Cavs with another 30 in this game. He had 12 in the fourth quarter and hit a game-tying jump shot, like a really uh, a really nice step-back jump shot through his legs against Josh Green on the right wing to tie the game uh, with about a minute left. Cam Thomas is now 9 for 19 on pull-up jump shots this season, 4 for 6 on floaters. His shot making is real. We've just seen too many examples of it so far through the last two years. And again, the biggest indicator is that his teammates trust him at the end of these games. This is back-to-back games now that down the stretch, uh, whether it's Spencer Dinwiddie or Mikhail Bridges, they're looking at Cam Thomas and being like, you do it. And and I think that's a huge indicator of where 
um, where he's at right now as an offensive shot creator. The, the Nets just have to figure out how to get stops in crunch time. They've had big leads down the stretch in both of these games, but they have a 123 defensive rating in the clutch so far this year. So you've played well enough to be 2-0, and and instead you're 0-2. And, and that's the primary reason, and that's what they're going to have to clean up.